Welcome back. We start from Iraq, where 14 more people have been shot dead during anti-government protests in southern Assyria city. Meanwhile, Iraq holds the Iraqi government responsible for failing to prevent protesters from burning its consulate in southern Najaf city. Foreign Ministry spokesman Abbas Musavi said it is Baghdad's responsibility to secure safety of diplomatic missions and diplomats. Earlier, a group of anti-government protesters set fire to Iran's consulate in the southern city of Najaf. Demonstrators chanted Iran out of Iraq as flames engulfed the building. The protesters broke into the building, but the Iranian staff had already left. It is the second attack on an Iranian consulate in Iraq this month, after the consulate in Karbala was targeted three weeks ago. Deadly protests in Iraq have killed over 350 people in the past two months. Post-Soviet security bloc, the CSTO, has pledged to support international efforts to preserve the 2015 Iranian nuclear deal. The Collective Security Treaty Organization comprises Russia, Armenia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. In a statement, the bloc's foreign minister said the nuclear deal should be fulfilled in line with UN Security Council Resolution 2231. Members of the CST organization say they favor step-by-step -step implementation of commitments under the pact. Meanwhile, Russia's President Vladimir Putin has arrived in Kyrgyzstan's capital, Bishkek, to attend the CSTO summit. Each member's head of state will be at the summit. Iran says it will soon organize joint naval exercises with Russia and China in the Indian Ocean. Commander of the Iranian Navy, Rear Admiral Hussein Khanzadi, said the plan of the military exercises was compiled last month. He said the participants are currently engaged in preparations for the joint exercises. Khanzadi did not specify the date of the maneuvers. Last month, Russia said Moscow, Beijing and Tehran will train their forces for anti-terrorism and anti-piracy operations in joint military exercises. Syria's government has blocked the Constitutional Committee meetings in Geneva for a third consecutive day. Speaking to reporters, the committee co-chair Hadi al-Bahra accused the government of stalling. Al-Bahra said Damascus wanted to add an item to the agenda that fell outside the basic framework of the constitution. He said Syrian government officials have also rejected all three proposals made by the opposition. Ahmed Kuzbari, the committee co-chair representing the Syrian government, said it had wanted to condemn Turkey's operation in northern Syria. The second round of the committee dialogue began on Monday. Two Turkish soldiers have been killed in a mortar attack on a military base near the Syrian border. Turkey's defense ministry said the shells were fired from the Syrian border town of Tel Abayad. It said Turkish forces immediately retaliated against the attackers. The defense ministry said the attack targeted a base which Turkey seized last month in a military operation against the Kurdistan Workers' Party. The U.S. says the chances of successful negotiations to end the war in Afghanistan are greater than ever before. Speaking in Kabul, U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff General Mark Milley said a deal with the Taliban could be struck soon. Milley said negotiations between the U.S. and Taliban are ongoing. Pakistan's permanent representative to the U.N. Munir Akram said Islamabad supports Afghanistan's vital pursuit of peace and stability. This sentiment was echoed by China's representative to the UN, Zhang Jun. He said Beijing backs an Afghan and Afghan led and Afghan owned inclusive political process. China has summoned US ambassador in protest after President Donald Trump approved a law backing anti government protesters in Hong Kong. China's foreign ministry said the U.S. should immediately stop interfering in its internal affairs. In a statement, China's foreign ministry said the U.S. would bear the consequences for acting arbitrarily on Hong Kong. Foreign Minister Wang Yi said the new U.S. law slanders China to a legislation close to madness. Wang said the Congress' repeated enactment of laws against Beijing have seriously poisoned relations between both the countries. Hong Kong's government said the U.S. law sent the wrong message to protesters and clearly interfered with the city's affairs. 
For more on this developing story, we are joined live from our Beijing correspondent Patrick Falk. Hello, Patrick. So, what reaction has there been from the China on the passage of these bills? Well, you touched on some of it just a moment ago. A, a while ago, the foreign ministry, as you can imagine, criticized the move by the U.S. and warned, as you say, would, there would be uh, consequences if the U.S. continued to uh, act arbitrarily over Hong Kong. In particular, it said that the passage of the bill was a gross violation of China's internal affairs. It also said that it was a, a gross violation of uh, international law governing the norms of international or, uh, international relations. And it also said uh, that this was an example of the U.S. Uh, acting uh, with hegemony, uh, imposing its hegemony uh, over other countries. Now, the Global Times, uh, Chinese media, the state math mathpiece Global Times, uh, also quoted an analyst, uh, and you touched on this a moment ago as well, uh, suggesting that this would encourage uh, rioters and violent acts, and uh, said that it essentially uh, gives umbrella protection to people who are anti-Chinese. The Hong Kong government this morning also issued its response. It said that it would uh, would react pragmatically to the developments, uh, which perhaps mean that it doesn't intend to take any steps to retaliate at this time, although there have been concerns that uh, American businesses might be uh, impacted by this. American businesses uh, in Hong Kong in particular, that is. So Patrick, as you said, China has been vocal in warning the US not to go ahead with this. Do you think Beijing might have been taken by surprise by this? Well, perhaps you could say that, given that it had protested quite sternly about this move. And you mentioned a, a while ago that on Monday that the foreign ministry had summoned the U.S. ambassador, Terry Branstad, and uh, and given stern, uh, lodged stern complaints about the potential passage of the bill. But remember, the bill was passed almost unanimously uh, by Congress and the Senate. In fact, there was only... Uh, one vote against in the House, which means that even if President Trump wanted to veto the bill, uh, he wouldn't have been able to do so necessarily because it would have been overridden by that a huge majority and that huge support for the passage of the Human Rights and Democracy Act in, in particular. Thank you, Patrick Falk, for talking to us live from Beijing. More in this bulletin. Seoul says North Korea has test-fired two unidentified projectiles into the East Sea. South Korea's Joint Chiefs of Staff said the projectiles were fired from South Hamgyong province into coastal waters. Japan's Coast Guard has also confirmed North Korea launched what appeared to be a missile. Its defense ministry said the missile did not enter Japanese airspace. It is the 13th time this year that North Korea has carried out such tests. The military moves by Pyongyang come amid a lack of progress in the North's new declarization talks with the U.S. NATO Chief uh, Jens Stoltenberg will confront French President Emmanuel Macron in Paris today over his claim that the alliance is brain dead. Earlier this month, Macron highlighted the lack of strategic coordination between the European Union and the United States. Stoltenberg immediately defended the 70-year-old alliance, which binds the U.S. and its European partners to protect each in the event of an attack. The NATO Secretary General said he will seek clarification from Macron today. Stoltenberg said the best way to address differences is to sit down and discuss them. Macron's remarks set the tone for a scheduled gathering of NATO leaders on December 3rd to commemorate the alliance's 70th anniversary. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has denied the existence of plans to sell the country's national health service to US investors. Earlier, Labour's Jeremy Corbyn presented documents saying access to Britain's state-run health service is being discussed in trade talks with the US. Corbyn said the uncensored papers could lead to the runway of privatization of the country's health service. But Johnson said he wants a dynamic, flourishing UK economy to allow the government to fund the NHS over the long term. 
this is a complete diversion that the NHS under no circumstances will be on the table for negotiation for sale. Look at what we're doing with the NHS. We're funding it massively. And the reason we can fund it massively is because we believe as one nation conservatives, this is a new government with a new approach. We believe in putting big sums now into the NHS and sustainably for the future. But we also believe in driving the long term growth of the UK economy. We're now taking a short break. Stay with us. Astronomers have discovered a huge black hole in the Milky Way, challenging existing models of the production of stars. Researchers say LB1 is 15,000 light years from Earth and has a mass 70 times greater than the Sun. Scientists believe that there are two types of black hole, stellar and supermassive black holes. LB1 is a new type formed by a physical mechanism so far unknown to science. It was discovered by an international team of scientists using China's sophisticated LAMOS telescope. Additional images from two of the world's largest optical telescopes confirm the size of LB1. A rare portrait of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart has sold for 4 million euros at Christie's in Paris. It rapidly passed the pre-sale estimate of 800,000 to 1.2 million euros. The work, one of four paintings of the composer, was made in 1770. It has been attributed to Italian painter Giambattini Signorelli. The portrait was ordered by Venetian receiver general Pietro Lugatti some days after an organ concert by Mozart in Verona. An oil on canvas portrait depicts a 13 year old Mozart in a white wig and a red frock coat playing the harpist chord. What's very interesting about that portrait is the musical score because it's actually only known from that portrait. So some uh, musicologists have said it could be the work of Mozart himself, who wrote that when he was young and left it behind to the commissioner. Ahead of the 93rd annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, the big balloons are blown up in New York. Event organizers say there will be going to be something for everybody as five new characters will be added this year. This report has all the festive details. Each balloon is methodically filled with air. Old-timers Pillsbury Doughboy will join newcomers Netflix, Green Eggs and Ham, and Love Flies Up to the Sky by Yaoi Kasoma. Of course, the giant inflatables have to be joined at the event by children looking on. I think coming here is a lot better than school because, because, because the school, because, because I'm in third grade and, we, and we're usually doing work in school. Uh, uh, well, well, at recess we get to play, but on, on, on lunch we get to talk a lot. The organizers are also looking to celebrate history. Right behind me we have Snoopy returning as an astronaut this year to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the, parade, of the uh, moon landing. The weather is one constant organizers can change and have to allow for. Their concern is that the parade could be cancelled because of strong winds. There's a combination of things that we really look at. We have a lot of real-time data that we're analyzing along the route the entire time. So we start to take a look at exactly how much, uh, how high are the winds. We do have guidelines that we follow. We keep in, within uh, 23 mile an hour sustained and 34 gusts. Clowns, cheerleaders and marching bands will join the march to celebrate the Thanksgiving holiday. The U.S. economy has expanded modestly in the third quarter, with the GDP growing at an annualized rate of 2.1 percent. The latest data exceeds the U.S. Federal Reserve Bank's expectations of economic growth, dipping under 2 percent. In a survey, the Fed said the modest growth firming of growth reported by the government came alongside a drop in unemployment benefits. The survey showed retailers reporting higher costs from tariffs, while firms generally expect higher prices in the near future. Meanwhile, the U.S. Department of Commerce has said business investment dropped by over 2.5% between July and September. This was better than the expected 3% contraction. 
The U.S. central bank shaved its policy lending rate in October for the third time this year and signaled a pause in the easing cycle that started in July. Stock markets across Europe are trading lower after U.S. President Donald Trump approved a law backing anti-government protesters in Hong Kong. Investors are closely monitoring the situation for potential fallout on trade talks between the U.S. and China. London's FTSE 100 index has shed half a percent after tech giant Johnson Matthey's stocks nearly dropped 4 percent. Frankfurt's DAX is trading nearly half a percent lower ahead of the release of fresh German inflation data. The CAC 40 in Paris is also trading fractionally lower. In Asia, the Shanghai Composite Lawyer losses closing nearly half a percent lower amid rising tensions between the world's largest economies. Now let's look at the weather from around the globe. This is all for now. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at indus.news.